Hello, I'm A.V., the founder and CEO at Avero Advisors. Today, we're going to be talking about the emerging trends in state and local government technology for 2024. We're diving into a topic first that's revolutionizing the way we think about government services and operations. Artificial intelligence, or AI. Let's explore how this technology is not just a buzzword, but a real tool for positive change in our communities. At its core, AI is about machines thinking and learning like humans. It's a powerful tool that can transform vast amounts of data into insights, automate routine tasks, and offer personalized services to our constituents. But what does AI really mean for us in the public sector? Imagine a city where your questions to the local government are answered instantly, any time of day, thanks to AI-powered chatbots. Or consider how fraud detection systems can protect public funds by learning from public transactions, past transactions to identify suspicious patterns. States like Ohio and cities around the globe are already making these scenarios a reality, using AI to enhance efficiency and safeguard resources. But with great power comes great responsibility. Integrating AI raises important questions about privacy, data security, and ethical use. How do we ensure that AI systems are fair and unbiased? How do we protect the privacy of our citizens' data? These are critical considerations as we move forward. So how can your organization start leveraging AI? First, it's about understanding your needs and the solutions AI can offer. Training is crucial both in technical skills for our IT teams and in ethical guidelines for AI use. And finally, it's about taking that first step with pilot projects to learn and adapt. So the next trend we're gonna talk about is identity management. In this segment, we're tackling a trend that's foundational to our digital society's security and efficiency. The evolution of identity management. As we navigate the complexities of the digital age, understanding this shift is crucial for every government official. Identity is no longer just about a piece of physical ID. It's about how we securely and effectively prove who we are in a digital world. This shift towards digital identity management is redefining our approach to security, accessibility, and privacy. But what does this mean for us in practice? Imagine a world where citizens have complete control over their personal information using digital identities that can't be stolen or duplicated. This is not a distant future, it's a possibility with decentralized identity technologies built on the secure foundation of blockchain. It's a game changer for everything from voter registration to health records. Adopting these new identity solutions brings challenges, including ensuring interoperability across systems and maintaining robust privacy protections. However, the opportunities for improved service delivery and enhanced security are immense. It's about finding the balance. So how do we begin? It starts with education and collaboration. Understanding the technology and its implications is step one. From there, Pilot programs can help us learn and adapt in real time, setting the stage for a broader implementation. So the next trend to talk about is data. Today we're shining a light on the unsung heroes of our digital transformation efforts. The underlying data infrastructure technologies. Often overlooked, these are the backbone of our ability to innovate and serve our communities effectively. In the quest for flashy new technologies, it's easy to overlook the basics. But without a solid data management and governance foundation, even the most sophisticated tools can fall short. So what makes this infrastructure so vital? Consider the efficiency gains from having a unified data model across government services, or the potential for cross-agency collaboration when systems can seamlessly talk to each other. Multiple states around the country are leading the way, showing how standardized data models can enhance service delivery. Building and maintaining this infrastructure isn't without its challenges. 
It requires a commitment to standardization, privacy, and security. But the benefits improve efficiency, enhance services, and more informed decision-making far outweigh these challenges. Starting this journey involves a thorough assessment of our current infrastructure, identifying gaps, and prioritizing improvements. It also means investing in our people, providing the training and resources they need to manage and protect our data effectively. The next emerging trend for 2024 for local governments is the shift from cybersecurity to cyber resilience. In today's digital age, it's not about if a cyber attack will happen, but when. So let's dive into what this means for us. Cyber resilience marks a paradigm shift in our approach to digital threats. It's about preparing to withstand, respond to, and recover from cyber attacks, ensuring that our services remain uninterrupted. But how do we move from a defensive posture to one of resilience? Imagine a scenario where a government service is targeted by a cyber attack. With a resilient framework, not only are the defenses robust, but the system is also designed to ensure continuity of service, minimizing disruption. This approach is already being adopted by leading governments around the globe, focusing on agility and recovery. Building cyber resilience is no small feat. It involves a comprehensive overhaul of existing security strategies, incorporating redundancy, response planning, and continuous learning from attempted breaches. The pathway involves regular risk assessments, staff training, and fostering a culture of vigilance. So where do we begin? The journey starts by acknowledging the fact that cyber threats are inevitable and adopting a mindset that's geared towards resilience. From there, it's about building capabilities in incidents response, recovery planning, and importantly, learning from every incident to fortify our defenses. The next trend for 2024 in local governments is the user experience. The increasing importance of user experience or UX in digital services. In a world where digital is the first point of contact, user experience is more than a nice to have, it's, it's essential. Let's understand why. User experience in government technology isn't just about making websites look good. It's about making services accessible, intuitive, and efficient for everyone. With a focus on user experience, we can bridge the gap between government services and the public, ensuring that our digital offerings meet the needs of our diverse communities. Consider a government portal where residents can find all the services they need in one place with a few clicks, or a mobile app that simplifies reporting community issues with real-time updates. These aren't hypotheticals, they're real examples from governments that have placed UX at the heart of their digital strategy, seeing increased engagement and satisfaction in return. Prioritizing user experience presents its own set of challenges, from aligning diverse stakeholder needs to ensuring accessibility for all users. The key lies in adopting a human-centered design approach, focusing on real user needs throughout the development process and embracing a continuous feedback and iteration. So how can we start enhancing UX in our digital services? It begins with research, understanding our users, their needs and their behaviors, and then prototyping, testing and refinement involving users at every step. By fostering a culture of user-centered design, we can transform the way citizens interact with the government. Investing in UX is investing in the satisfaction and trust of our communities. As we look into the future, let's commit to making our digital services more user-friendly, accessible, and effective. Thank you for joining me in this discussion. Together, we can create a government that is truly by the people, for the people.